Hey folks, it's Mangirl. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to attempt to fix the biggest issue with the DJI 04 light air unit, which is the very narrow field of view that the camera provides, which makes indoor flying very, very difficult. And the footage you're seeing right now is after the modification using my preferred lens. And this is what you can expect after the modification when you're flying in 16 by 9 format. The first step of the modification is to get off the original lens that comes with the camera. And you can actually see where the camera lens and the image sensor join together. There's a little tiny bit of a crease over here, a little bit of a gap where I've got my knife right now. And you can actually see the glue that the factory has used to get these together. So just to make sure we're all clear, from where I have my knife right now down to here, that is the lens. From here down is the actual image sensor. So what I found is the easiest way to get this original lens off is to take a heat gun, make sure you wear gloves so you're not burning your hand. So you're gonna be working on this when it's already warm. So wear gloves and then go ahead and heat this top piece. So you wanna heat the top piece around this connection point of the sensor and the lens. You wanna heat it up on a low setting. You don't want it to melt. All you're trying to do is soften the glue to make the next step easier. So again, low temperature, you don't want it to melt. And then take your X-Acto knife and start to pry all four corners where these two join together. Don't push too far in because you'll get to the actual sensor and damage this, but just go around the edge and start to pry a little bit to pop the sensor off. Now do not go ahead and pull the sensor off with your hand. If you pull the lens off with your hand, you will separate this gray plastic at the bottom. And this gray plastic is a part of the actual sensor itself. Now for the next step, you wanna go ahead and 3D print some sort of adapter. I found two different versions of the adapter. There's the one you're seeing right now on the screen, which is supposed to be a direct replacement and have the same dimensions as the original lens that comes with the O4 light air unit. So I've tried this one. I've also tried another design that ends up having screw holes on either side. I actually prefer this design more. It'll make our lives easier when we try to fit this in frames that are designed for the O4 light air unit. So this is the one that I recommend. Now, I did find that if I print this at 100%, it actually becomes too big. And when you slot the actual lens in here, the lens doesn't grab enough. And when you crash, the lens will move and it'll just go out of focus. So I found on my printer, I have to print this at 98.5% um, dimension. And when I do that, it is perfect. I've printed this in both ABS and I've also tried printing this in PETG. ABS is a little bit better. It's also a tiny bit, like maybe 10% lighter. So what you're seeing right now is this printed in ABS. The next step is really all about just lining things up. So what you wanna do is take a little bit of B7000 glue and get a little bit around the edge of the actual image sensor where that gray plastic is, and then get your lens with your 3D printed adapter onto the actual camera. And this is where you're gonna to have to play around with the positioning of the actual 3D printed adapter to get it to a point that you're happy. Now, it may not be perfect. You may end up getting some little black bars on the corners, but you wanna move this around in the typical settings you'll fly. So if you typically fly in four by three, do it in four by three. If you typically fly in 16 by nine, do it in 16 by nine. But generally you wanna get this as perfect as you can. Again, it won't be perfect, but it'll be pretty good. When you're applying the glue, do not cross over the actual image sensor. Stick to the perimeter of that gray plastic. Because if you do go over the image sensor, the glue will string and you'll get some weird artifacts when you're looking at your flight footage. If you do happen to get a little bit of dust on the actual sensor, I found using a piece of masking tape or scotch tape is probably the best to, to get it off. We're gonna use my Beta FPV Meteor 65 Pro 04 edition for all the testing. This is the lightened version that I created in my prior video. I will have links to those videos in the video description. But first of all, we wanna test this with the stock 04 air unit light camera and see how the view is. Now let's do a baseline test because I wanna see how the weight changes as we progress. So baseline test, stock configuration, this is 25.95 grams. Let's start off by flying the stock camera lens on four by three aspect ratio. And this is really the best way to fly the stock lens, just given how bad the FOV and how narrow the FOV is. 
But this is definitely flyable. It just makes the basement seem a lot smaller than it actually is. Now we're flying the stock lens in 16x9 and the FOV becomes even smaller, which makes flying around these tight obstacles a bit more difficult. It's doable, but we really shouldn't have to experience this in 2025. The next lens we're gonna try is the Runcam HD0 lens, and this lens looks quite ridiculous given the size of it, but it does fit, so we will try it. And then weight-wise, we are now looking at 27.78 grams, so we've definitely added some weight. Next, we have the Runcam HD0 lens, and this gives us a lot of black borders around the edges in 4x3, but distortion-wise, it looks pretty good, and the FOV is just about right but this is only good for flying around. We're not gonna be able to do much cinematics with this given the black borders and the blurry edges. Now in 16 by nine, it's a very similar story. We do get the blurry edges. We also have the black borders, but the FOV is quite good for flying around and it does make the basement here look a decent size. Oh, our lens moved and now we are blurry. Next, we have the Avatar Nano Lens, and this definitely looks way more suitable for this size of quad. Doing a weight check, now we are at 26.38 grams, so we've added just a little bit of extra weight. Now, with the Avatar Nano Lens, we're getting a very, very fisheye kind of experience. So you can see as I spin around this slowly, it gives us quite a fisheye, but not, not too bad. We are seeing a lot of ducks in view in 4x3, but... This, again, for flying around, could be a decent experience once you get used to it. I can still hit some of these, but it does feel a little bit unnatural given just the, the fisheye that we've got. But this, this could work. Sharpness looks good. Colors look decent. 16x9 seems to be where this lens is more usable. So as I'm flying around, the fisheye experience has been cut down. I can hit some of these gaps a little bit more easily. It feels a bit more natural as well. So if you are going to use this lens probably want to use 16 by 9 and I think you can still use this as a cinematic kind of experience as well. I'm not seeing any borders in view, edges look sharp. This could be a potentially viable option. The next lens we're going to try is the Cadex Ant lens and this is the lens that most folks seem to recommend online. On the surface it does look similar to the Avatar Nano lens and then weight wise we are looking at 26.38 grams with this lens. Flying around the 4x3, the Cadex Ant lens actually seems very similar to the Avatar Nano lens. I'm getting definitely a fisheye experience, but I'm actually getting a lot more kind of um, rays coming off the light. So this, this is actually a worse experience. I'm also getting some blurriness in the edges. The center seems nice and crisp, but the edges do look a little bit blurry. So as of right now... So as of right now, this is probably my least favorite lens and because I've crashed, now what's happened is I've lost the focus. Flying this around is 16 by nine, very similar to the Avatar Nano lens. We get a better experience. This feels a little bit more fisheye than the Avatar Nano, even in 16 by nine. I'm also seeing that the edges are a little bit more blurry. So I don't know, between these lenses, I'm actually thinking that the Avatar Nano lens was a bit better. I'm still getting some weird artifacting, some weird rays coming off the light sources. So not, not really a big fan of, of this lens. If you've got one, you could use it, but not a, a very good experience. I, I would not recommend this lens. The final lens we're gonna try is the one from the Nebula Pro Nano Camera. And this one was a bit more difficult to find, but you can easily find it on AliExpress. Doing a weight check with this lens, we are looking at 26.38 grams. Looking at the Nebula Pro Nano Lens, this is giving us a very fisheye experience as well, but the colors look good, the sharpness looks good. I do get some black borders in the top corners, so this may be a good lens for just flying around, but probably not the best for a cinematic experience. Flying the Nebula Nano Lens in 16x9 actually seems quite good. The distortions are a lot less, we don't see those borders anymore in the top corners. It still is a little bit fisheye as I fly around here. You get that weird distorted sense, but this could actually be okay, especially if you want to fly in 16 by 9 This footage could potentially be usable as some cinematic footage as well, but this, this is not bad. We can make this work. Having spent a few weeks on a modification, unfortunately, I could not find that perfect lens. I purchased four different lenses with my own money, and each of those lenses had some sort of compromise. 
that compromise ranged from very focused tunnel kind of view or just ranged from weird artifacts to a fisheye experience. Ultimately, if you want to do this modification, you have to ask yourself, what do you plan on using your O4 light air units for? If you want to fly indoors in tight spaces, you need more field of view, which means you have to, at this point, do a modification like this. And that was my requirement. So given my type of flying here in a smaller basement, I need more FOV to be able to actually fly this around decently. And in that view, I found that the Avatar Nano Lens or the Nebula Pro Nano Lens gave me the best experience, especially when flown in 16 by nine. The fisheye was reduced, just very tiny little bit of a black border in the corner. That just seemed to give us the best experience and these lenses are pretty readily available as well. Hopefully next video, make sure to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos.